going on, everybody? It's your favorite girl, Tisha, for coming straight out of sicky, 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 sunny SoCal, and you want to know how to improve communication in all relationships. And we're gonna hop right to it. Let's kick it. <laughs> This is your girl. We're here with the empowerment series. If this is your first time, don't forget to go ahead and at the end of the video, I ask that you drop a comment if you got some value and also give this video a thumbs up. And please don't forget to smash that subscribe button. That way, you know, you don't miss out on what I can really tell you about some tea, okay? Tea with Tisha, that is. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So many women and men feel very undervalued when it comes to communication. For example, when you're getting ready to tell your spouse, your mate, your person of interest, your loved one, you know, something that you've been really contemplating and kind of like walking on eggshells, like, man, should I really tell them this right now? Then it's like, oh, you know, you're going to be upset because you'll, you know, their reaction for the most part. It's kind of like you're setting them up for disappointment. It's kind of like that gloom or doom situation, right? We've all been there. So it's really important that we actually talk about you know, communication and the importance of keeping communication consistent. That way everyone can have a safe zone and not feel like, hmm, should I tell this person, should I not? Now, if you ask me, I say communication is key. It is the number one hoopla. It's the whole shanana. Like, <laughs> it's really key to every single relationship and you should never take communication for granted. But oftentimes, surprisingly, you guys, it is. And you know what can test people's ego? Huh. Relationships, situationships, friendships, business relationships, whatever it is that you have going on with somebody. A friendship, a lovership. And why are your egos tested? Egos really feed us with expectations and beliefs. It's kind of like you set yourself up like, the way you think, oh, they should be responding this way, they should be doing this, they should be saying that that way, they should move like this, like you. <laughs> we start to gather expectations from that other person without them even knowing. And then, you know, they don't even realize this. It's like they're not meeting our expectation, but we didn't even let them know what we're thinking, what we're creating in our mind about that. And half the time, you guys, you have to recognize we are walking around with expectations. Whether you're messing with an old flame or you got back, you know, you went back to that job again, you know, a relationship with your boss, you know, uh, whether you and your best friend, you fell out and you got back up again and you guys are talking, you know, whether it's a new situation, even a new person that you just met, no matter what situation that you're in, we tend to have expectations and they don't even know it. The other person does not know it. And this continues on until, you know, it gets deeper and deeper throughout time, right? It just becomes this cycle that we do every time with every single person that comes into our lives. So we have to be willing to really accept and understand that people do change and grow and they also have setbacks. We are not perfect. If you think you're perfect, go ahead and click off this video already. <laughs> so make sure that no matter what situation ship that you're in, you've got to make sure that communication is there and that you're supporting one another. So I'm going to go ahead and give you some tips on how we can really get that ball rolling. Tip number one, communication, right? So when you think of communication, a lot of people would like to put a facade or they like to wear their mask per se. It's like you're meeting their representative if it's a new, if it's a new person. But also too, you know, people from back in the day used to talk to you and you're like, oh, okay, I wanna to talk to this person now. Or, oh, you know, let's be friends again. I got over what I got over with you. Let, let's just let bygones be bygones, right? You still walk around with a mask or a facade or you're just meeting their representative in the beginning. So I always say the more horribly awkward communication like you have with that person is better. For example, telling stories or viewpoints where you may disagree to agree, um, where you know that person before didn't like that if you knew them, you know, and now they're like, huh, they're giving you the side eye. So those kind of conversations, those uncomfortable, you know, nail biting, 
teeth grinding conversations. They're just the, the ones that make you sweat, the ones that make you wonder, ooh, should I do this? I feel as if those conversations, and they are proven to actually have people come together to become closer. It's like the trust factor starts building upon those conversations. So surprisingly, raising that bar, communication will come more fluid once you've gotten all the grit and grimy stories out of the way. Now, this all depends on the way that you present the information. You gotta make sure that you can't be super offensive. You can't have a lack of compassion. When you show no empathy, you know, if you're not making them feel embarrassed and you really come to some kind of understanding where you guys can really meet in the middle and you do all of this through communication. So let's go ahead and roll out tip number two. Eliminate being passive aggressive. When you do this, whether you're talking to a woman to a man or a man to a woman, you know, people end up shutting down, especially you men. When you are passive aggressive with a man, they definitely will shut down. Now, this is a really good tip for people you're in business with or relationships. And men kind of, they kind of swim away and seek elsewhere. Not justifying that, you know, this is why you should do this, but you know, just make sure that you're very cautious. Women can do this as well. Um, they're just kind of like, well, I'm just gonna, go to stage left. <laughs> so let's go ahead and move on to tip number three. You have to empathize with intense listening skills. A lot of people will listen, it'll go one ear and out the other, and later on that situation is gonna come back in a conversation and they're gonna be like, you weren't listening to me? Wait, you didn't hear what I said when I told you that? So listening is key. A lot of us don't listen nowadays. We just hear each other and you're sitting there waiting for the next thing to say, and you're waiting for the next thing to say, and you're just really not paying attention. You know, we have to pay attention to the dialogue that we're speaking with one another. What words are you using? What's your tonality? And so you really want to try and work out the problem with them if there is a problem or an issue or you know something that's being contemplated on. You wanna make sure that you're working it through with them. I always like to use words like we, you know, instead of I per se, that might help your conversation. Don't make that person feel alone when you're conversing with them, whether that's over the phone, in person, FaceTime, you know, however you guys converse, just make sure they don't feel alone. And the key factor in all of this is at the bottom line when you're listening, ask, how can I help you? How can I make this relationship healthy? Not saying, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Why would you do that? Like that, that's kind of throwing daggers at that person. It's a negative connotation and it makes them shut down and then the communication gets really sour, okay? Per se, it's kind of pointing the finger even when you may not agree with that way of how they're doing something. Just say, how can I help? Because guess what? There could be so many ways that you could po possibly really help them once you let them get it all out and filter it out. Some people just need an ear. And when they hear themselves, it helps them to have an, uh, an out-of-body experience sometimes. And they'll step back and be like, wow, whoa. Like they'll have their own light bulb and realization once they get the words out to someone else. So just provide recommendations when you're listening to that person. Just eliminate, you know, betrayal, eliminate belittling them per se, calling them names like dumb and stupid. Like those words are very powerful and they can really mess with someone's psyche at the end of the day. And when you do those kinds of actions, they'll actually devalue that relationship with that person, whether you work with them, you're, you're in love with them, married to them, you're a friend to them, a lover to them, a person of interest. Just be careful, okay? Communication is always key. So I know you guys got some value out of this video. Go ahead and share this with somebody that needs to hear this, okay? And also comment down below if you agree or if any tips that you actually use and if you have any more tips for somebody else. And go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That way I can notify you on more videos from the empowerment movement. I'll see you guys at the beaches and the banks. Peace.